Hello everyone, Troy Simbasini here, owner and head of research of Sunshine Life Buyers Agency. Super excited to bring you this market update for Noosa. So if you are a property buyer or you're looking at potentially buying a home or investment in this area, you're gonna get a ton of value as we break down exactly what's going on in this marketplace, guys. Super excited to do this one for you. But just a quick uh, plug on who we are. So Sunshine Life Buyers Agency are property buyers. We work exclusively for buyers. We don't sell any real estate at all and we help property buyers buy your next home or investment. And we're generally helping those that are geographically challenged or interstate. So if you feel as though you might need some help or professional representation in and around Noosa in buying your next home or investment, feel free to reach out to me and the team. You can check us out on Facebook uh, give us a call on that number or visit us on our website. Be super excited to have a chat guys. Cheers So as part of this market update what we'd like to do is look at a range of different data to really break down and tell us what's going on in the marketplace and try and pinpoint and diagnose exactly what's going on so in turn you could go out into this marketplace and sort of know what you're in for and be better equipped to navigate through it. So we look at mainly everything that's going on on the supply side and then everything that's going on on the demand side and then we sort of uh, figure out then from there what's going on and then as part of this update I give uh, some high level analysis as part of what's happening on the demand side and what's happening on the supply side and then summarize in the end some key takeaways so you guys can put that in your back pocket to go and help you navigate the marketplace. But essentially we're going to be looking at immediate house price and what's going on there. Look at the listing volumes and inventory uh, pool in and around Noosa. Look at what the demand side is telling us in terms of days on market, what the absorption rate looks like. We're also going to have a look at what's going on on the rental side of things as well around vacancy rates and what the median rent is in the area and its trends. And then we're going to look at the new supply pipeline as well because that could potentially play a role in, in terms of what's happening right now in real time or in the short or medium term as well around house prices and rental yields etc as well as vacancies so we'll have a look at that new supply pipeline as well and then as i said i'll finish off with some high level summary and trends stick around guys so let's start off by looking at the median house price in noosa and what its trend has been for the last three months and we can see here that the median house price in noosa as of january 2023 is currently at $1,661,000 and it's actually up from $1,645,000 in November 2022, so just three months ago. And the median price has essentially grown by 2% in the last three months. It says five months later, that's meant to be three. So what is that telling us, guys? It's telling us that Noosa is a market still surging along. We've obviously seen the retractions in Brisbane and the Gold Coast, parts of the Sunshine Coast also other major capital cities such as Sydney and Melbourne you have started to see those median house prices start to attract or slow down. However, Noosa on the other hand, <coughs> over the last three months has been surging along guys. The property market in terms of its median house price has grown by the best part of 2%. So I guess a key takeaway there guys is to always remember that there are markets within markets and not all markets are going to perform the same. They have their own supply and demand drivers. So I wouldn't put Noosa in the same class as Brisbane, same class as Sydney or Melbourne because it's a totally different marketplace overall. We'll have to remember that. And I guess another key takeaway is if you're someone that's been sitting on the sidelines and was, was unsure as to what to do or whether or not it's a good time to buy, you kind of can see here that the market is growing. So the longer you potentially stay out of this marketplace, the more it might cost you to get in as that median house price is growing. So that's a key takeaway for someone that's been sitting on the sidelines right now. Let's look at the stock levels and listing volumes. What does that look like in and around Noosa? So we can see here that the stock levels are sitting at 0.3% which means that there were approximately 79 houses currently listed for sale in Noosa during January. And it's actually well under its two year average of 0.5%. So we can see that this trend line here sits at around 
0.25%, and then all of a sudden, uh, of late in the last two to three months, we've started to see those stock levels go through a dramatic decline here, now sitting at 0.3%. So a key takeaway for this one, or a few key takeaways, number one is that general, generally during that period between November to January, we do see a natural decline in listing volumes and that's largely because not too many people decide to sell property over that period so there was always sort of a natural tapering off here and i think that could certainly be the case here but just be mindful if you are a property buyer that listing volume is pretty low like to sit under 0.5 percent in terms of the velocity of listings that's low in terms of the market size and population base of Noosa itself. So you're gonna most likely be in a situation where you're dealing with multiple bidders per property because that supply is just not enough to potentially cater for that population base or that demand base overall. But yeah, 79 houses and sitting at 0.3% guys. That's what's happening in and around Noosa for stock levels. So we've seen those stock levels sit at around 0.5% for the last 24 months and then all of a sudden it's tapered off or fell off a cliff over the last three months, now sitting at 0.3%. What does that correlate to in terms of the inventory pool? We can see here that that listing volume currently correlates to uh, inventory sitting at around one month's worth of inventory. So in terms of the inventory pool, guys, that's a really shallow pool. That basically means that if the market were to go into a redundancy tomorrow and the only properties that were left on the market were the current ones that sold to the current demand, then the market, all the properties would be cleared essentially in under four weeks or just over four weeks, sorry. And those buyers would certainly clean those up. And based on that listing volume, it just doesn't appear to be sustaining that current level of demand as this inventory pool has gotten smaller and smaller over the last three months. So that's interesting guys and it's something to watch as we start to see an inventory pool get smaller and smaller. We then have to maybe find ways to pick up the supply side, more listing volume to come on to grow that inventory pool. But at this stage, it just doesn't look like the Noosa marketplace can sustain uh, the current demand levels at the velocity of listings of around 79 per month because that inventory pool is just contracting and contracting. So that's one to watch, guys. If we had a look at what's going on on the demand side, the days on market uh, metric is really good to the measure the demand side and what's happening in the marketplace. And all days on market is, is essentially how many days does it take for a property to essentially change ownership or change from buyer to seller or seller to buyer sorry and we can see here that the days on market in Noosa currently sit at 31 days 31 days you heard me correctly and it actually has dropped significantly since November 22 which where it sat at 69 days so you can see this graph here over the last three months before January Days on market sat well above 40 days and now it's dropped off a cliff down to 31. So that either means that there's been a significantly small sample size of properties that sold really fast uh, during the last three months or demand has really picked up and that days on market has just dropped significantly because there's just been not enough supply to cater for that demand and just demand overall has been strong. But that essentially means sitting at 31 days that most of the properties that are coming online in Noosa are going under contract in the first one to three days. So if you are an active buyer right now or you propose to buy in the near future, then you're probably going to be in a situation where you have to be very quick. And usually when this days on market number is low, that means that you're most likely dealing in situations where you are competing with other buyers. So you are in multiple offer scenarios. So you have to you know, really contemplate and consider what type of offer you're going to put forward and it needs to be attractive, whether it's price or terms. You can also see these black dots here. That's the vendor discounting rates. And it says here that the vendor discounting rates, we don't have a January figure, but we do have one for December and it sat at around 4%. So on average, most properties are 
selling either at listing price or slightly below listing price right now. Vendors are discounting properties at around 4% to get it cleared. So just be mindful of that if you are putting an offer forward for properties on the market for $1.5 million, then you might have the ability there to offer you know, one point three seven or something like that to get the deal done to cater for that four percent discount however it's every property is different every suburb within noosa is also different so just be mindful of your strategy when you go in to buy your next house but yeah on average a four percent vendor discounting rate and a 31 day on market in noosa very hot here guys if we looked at the auction clearance rate data so in december 2023 the auction clearance rate sat at 42% and it's been a spike in demand from the average clearance rate of 18% from September to November. So a lot of people there were on the hunt and around Christmas probably snapping up some festive bargains. It's really a good time to buy property generally because you have less demand or less active buyers in the marketplace. So there might have been uh, several buyers that were active over that December period and really spike some of those numbers, but it also could have been that a lot of the uh, agencies in town have you know, put a lot of properties on the market during that time. But to see in December that auction clearance rate jump up, just goes to show that, yeah, there is still demand uh, active in the area and the best part of you know, close to 50% of all the properties of late that's been going to auctions are selling. But I always say this, guys, if the auction clearance rate is generally above, below 50%, Percent. It also presents potentially a good buying opportunity if you are an active buyer and you've had some difficulty in buying a property, maybe it's worthwhile considering going to an auction and bidding for a property there that might be a potential fit because 50% or the best part of 60% of the properties get passed in so that might even present great opportunity and it'll give you an, an idea on what's what what to expect in terms of price and then you might, you might be able to figure out a strategy from there after you've appeared at one or two auctions. It's a good way to sort of reverse engineer what's going on in the marketplace and gauge what properties might be going for. So yeah guys, that's kind of what's happening in terms of auctions. Noosa is a weird marketplace in terms of auction clearance rates. Generally throughout regional Queensland, we don't look too much into auction clearance rate data because that necessarily doesn't really reflect what's going on in the marketplace. However, Noosa is a bit different where you have such a high-end uh, marketplace, so a lot of properties do go to auction. And so we actually do watch this data very closely and it's good to see it spike up to 40%. And the second we get out of our January data, I'll also publish that on all our socials as well. <coughs> So if we started to look at the overall demand in Noosa, the best way to do that is to work out its absorption rate. And we can actually see here that the overall, uh, that overall in Noosa, it's actually experiencing a healthy absorption rate of 59% during November 2022 to January 2023. And it's actually slightly up by 1% from 58% during August to October 2022. So we've actually start seeing the market here sort of maintain uh, absorption rate relatively high at around that 60% and there's been a 1% spike obviously in the last three months but for those that are unsure what the absorption rate is all it is is essentially over the last three months these are the amount of listings that have come on and of that amount of listings this is the portion of them that have sold so we can see here that there's been a total of 304 listings from November to January 2023 and there's been a total of 180 sales from November to January 23. And that gives us that 59% absorption rate. So that just goes to show that, yeah, if you are looking to get into this marketplace, then, you know, it's very competitive because it has a high absorption rate overall. And sellers, are, you know, get, can get some confidence out of this as well. If you are a seller or you're proposing to sell and you've stumbled across this video, then you know that there's a best part of a 60% chance here of your property being sold but that just goes to show that the overall marketplace in Noosa, guys, is very healthy. <clears throat> now, if we poke our head over to the rental side, I know some people might have stumbled across this video that might be interested in actually renting a Noosa first before diving in and purchasing a property. So we can have, actually have a look here at what the rental trend looks like 
So first and foremost, if we looked at the median rental data, so the median rent continues to follow in the rising trend, now sitting at $764 per week for houses in Noosa. This is houses here, guys, not apartments. So sorry that that data is not in here, but this is just four houses. And it's actually up by $5 or 0.6% since November. So overall, in summary, this is telling me that Noosa rents are rising. So most likely, well, much like the rest of the state, we do have a rental crisis and Noosa appears to be no different where rents are rapidly rising and in the last three months that medium has jumped by five dollars. I always say I don't have a crystal ball as to where it's going to go well as we can sort of see as to what's happening across the rest of the state where just on a macro level supply is pretty grim then we're most likely to start to see the same trend happening providing that you know all of the you know key fundamentals in the area remain the same but yeah guys if you plan to rent in the area you're going to be set back yeah the best part of 764 dollars a week so this is the median here though guys if we start to look at you know that rental figure there'd certainly be, be properties renting above that close to i'd say 900 to a thousand dollars a week particularly for those big executive style homes or those really attractive you know beach homes on, on the coastline or uh, on the canals or there'd be certainly some uh, houses maybe out in the hinterland that'll probably rent a lot less as well so it's creating that midpoint of around that seven hundred dollars but yeah guys if you propose to invest in the area based on that you know rent you could get per week as well as the median house price you're probably going to have a negatively geared asset here though guys overall i don't think you'd be in positive cash flow territory at all unless you're proposing to maybe do a buy an airbnb style property where that cash flow is a little bit higher but as you probably might be aware the airbnb uh, bylaws locally here are pretty complex and make it very difficult to generate a lot of cash flow but if you are a buy and hold investor you're most likely going to be in negative cash flow territory here guys based on uh, that median rent so i've seen that median rent surge along for the last three months by the best part of five dollars and what's largely driving this is the vacancy rates and we can see here that the vacancy rates continue their downward trend now sitting at 0.6% with only 45 properties currently available for rent in January 2023. So in terms of a, a base, in terms of you know, the amount of properties available for rent, that's only 45, that is very low and only 1.6% in terms of vacancies for a market and a population base, as well as a, such a desirable part of Queensland, if not Australia, to only have the best part of 45 properties available for rent at any given time. That's a very shallow uh, and in-demand marketplace. But yeah, guys, something to watch. Certainly, we've seen this trend, yeah, certainly trend down for the last four months. That rental vacancy rate is getting tighter and tighter. And I reckon certainly maybe by March, it might be sitting under 1% if this trend continues to follow. And as vacancy rates go down, Obviously, the amount of houses available for rents will also contract, so that means that vendors will most likely be jacking up their rents to cater to make market-based adjustments to the demand and the supply. So, yeah, something to keep an eye on there, guys. But if you're an investor, you certainly know that your property is going to be rented very quickly in the area. And the last thing we like to look at is what's going to be happening in the pipeline to maybe alleviate some of that rental pressure or to sort of determine where that house price might go in terms of the median house price because if the market is saturated with a whole bunch of new supply and that is met with equally with demand then we might start to see that median house price taper off here but if we actually looked at what the investment looks like in terms of building approvals in the area that's a good metric to measure what future supply might look like we actually it doesn't actually give us the data around what that turns into in terms of stock level but we can Get a rough idea of the investment and then kind of maybe reverse engineer backwards from there uh, a good um, a total of 130 million dollars of residential building approvals are in place for the 2022 to 2023 financial year so year to date uh, 130 million dollars and if you actually were to benchmark that against previous years probably uh, well below the last two years here guys but the good, thing, the good thing I like about this graph is that in terms of building approvals, what generally happens is you get a building approval as a developer, but it, you don't get an end product or finished product 
until one or two years later because you have to mobilize finance, go through the construction phase, etc. And that's pretty hard uh, right now, particularly uh, to construct uh, residential dwellings or commercial dwellings right now. It's a very difficult environment. But what I do like about this is that in 2021 to 2022 and then 2022 to 2021 financial years, those building approval rates have been really, really high. So we're most likely going to see the market, you know, be be saturated, not saturated, but be given some new supply. Um, and this residential building approvals could be townhouses, it could be apartments, it could be units, and it also could be freestanding homes, but there's not a lot of freestanding house and land packages available in and around Noosa anymore because this so uh, land is you know virtually non-existent. So we're starting to see a lot more median density unit, townhouse, apartment living in and around the LGA. So we're probably going to start to see more of that pop up as well. But yeah, to see $130 million worth of approvals uh, in the year-to-date financial year, that's good. But what I really like is that yeah, in the next two to three years, we're going to start to see some new supply coming to the marketplace. And hopefully that will cater for that demand and take a bit of pressure off that rising rent as well as that surging median house price. But in saying that, if you're an investor, you don't want to see this supply pipeline, you know, as bright because you want those rents to keep rising and you want that median house price to keep going. But overall, the fundamentals are still really good for new surf in terms of capital growth and cash flow if you're an investor anyway, despite this supply pipeline. But I'd probably say the majority of that stock, yeah, will be uh, townhouses and units and more boutique, high-end luxury living with that type of product type. But yeah, guys, key takeaway there is in one to two years, we're going to see new supply come into the marketplace, I'd say. So yeah, guys, overall, that might have been pretty hard to swallow, particularly if you're a mum and dad investor and you're not used to diving into the data. But if I were to give you some high-level takeaways to take home, starting with the very top, we can see here that the median house price is growing despite all the headwinds. So if you are someone, again, that was sitting on the sidelines, please don't sit on the sidelines because we actually see that the market is lacking supply and the demand is still strong with those absorption rates really high and those days on markets really low. So I've actually said that in my two other points where you know, if inventory levels and listing volumes continue to drop, we won't see house prices drop because supply is still very low relative to demand. So that's something to keep an eye on, guys. If that listing volume remains the same and demand hasn't fallen off a cliff, and we're most likely going to see the market surge along in terms of its median house price because supply is still relative, uh, lower relative to its demand. Days on market shows that most properties are selling in the first few days. So be quick if you are a buyer wanting to buy property in and around you. So you have to be super quick and you have to be very strategic in terms of your offer. Your offer have to, has to be attractive, whether it's price or terms, guys. You have to put an attractive offer forward. Uh, auctions are back with a vengeance. So good to see auctions are back but as I said it presents good buying opportunity as 60% of the stock gets passed in so if you are a buyer and you're figuring out trying to figure out what, what what's going on in the marketplace go to an auction throw your name in the hat if you miss out at least you know what properties are being passed in at and then you can kind of reverse engineer you know what a property might be worth going forward and come up with a bit of a plan or uh, be a bit more strategic around the type of offer you put forward in your next property uh, if you intend on selling, those absorption rates are really high. So if you are a seller and you watch this video, you have a 60% chance of your property selling. So those odds are very good. And overall, that absorption rate is really healthy. For a market with an absorption rate sitting above you know, 60% is always very healthy. And we see here that with vacancy rates continue to plummet without the relief of new supply, we might continue to see these soaring rents. So we've seen that new supply pipeline, new supply pipeline uh, of building approvals and that new supply might be, the market might be injected with that, I'll probably say in the next two to three years, I'll probably say. And that might alleviate some of that rental pressure depending on how much of that stock is investment or an occupier. If a lot of the new supply stock is on occupier, then we're really gonna still struggle seeing the median um, rents taper off because the supply level in terms of what's available for rent is still relatively low. So we have to be mindful of that new supply. What percentage of it is investment stock as well? But yeah, if, if that vacancy rates still remain low, those rents are going to continue to grow. So if you're an investor, guys, that's probably going to be a pretty attractive proposition for you as well. 
And yeah, those new supply pipelines guys um, may relieve some of that short term pressure in the next five, two to five years. However, you know, land availability is still a big issue in Noosa, particularly for freestanding uh, dwellings. Those families that are interested in you know, house and land packages, land is in very short supply here and very scarce. So you most likely have to pivot towards the existing stock or look at an alternative dwelling type, such as a townhouse or apartment. Anyway, guys, I hope that's helped you guys. Gave you some, you know, insider analysis as to what's going on in Noosa. And again, my name is Troy Simbasani, owner and head of research of Sunshine Life Buyers Agency. We have a Noosa-based office. If you do have any questions, actually, pertaining to what was covered as part of this market update, if you do have any questions, <clears throat> feel free to leave a comment in the comment section or book in a call with me and my team and we can unpack, you know, your questions together. But as I said, guys, if you are someone that's interstate or outside the country, reach out to us and we can potentially get you an off-market property, do all the search for you, do all the negotiating and do all the pre and post settlement support to make sure that, that transaction is very smooth for you guys. Anyway, thank you guys and bye for now.